Hello and thanks for joining us for our mid-morning edition of Arirang News. I'm Mark Broom. We start this morning with the domestic reaction to Donald Trump's victory in the U.S. presidential election. South Korea's political parties are gearing up for a new administration in Washington. Ruling Senate Party leader Lee Jung-hyun said he plans to talk with various experts in the field in relation to Donald Trump's surprise victory, but he urged the party to remain calm. He said the ruling party would work closely with the government to maintain stable economic relations with the United States and prevent a possible security crisis stemming from North Korea. The country's opposition parties are planning to discuss the issue in more detail, but have vowed to maintain strong ties with the U.S. They are also gathering opinions on how to deal with the political fallout from the power of abuse scandal, uh, abuse of power scandal rather, and decide on who to recommend as the next prime minister. Newly elected U.S. President Donald Trump is looking forward to strong U.S. relations with South Korea. This is according to Pete Hoekstra, a former congressman and one of Trump's foreign policy advisers, who says the president-elect believes the South Korea-U.S. friendship is important and will remain important, saying the two allies have strong national security and economic ties. He said Trump will, quote, build on that relationship to grow our economies to the benefit of both countries and coordinate on national security issues to handle regional threats. Now, despite the statement, there are serious concerns here in South Korea that the incoming Trump administration could withdraw U.S. troops from the country and take steps to renego renegotiate their free trade deal, as Trump has mentioned numerous times during his campaigning. Hillary Clinton has appeared in public for the first time since suffering a surprise defeat in that election, voicing hope that Donald Trump would be a successful president for all Americans. President Obama also congratulated Trump on his historic victory. No Aram has more. In an emotional concession speech in New York on Wednesday, Hillary Clinton expressed disappointment over the result and voiced hope that Trump would be a successful president. I hope that he will be a successful president for all Americans. This is not the outcome we wanted or we worked so hard for, and I'm sorry that we did not win this election for the values we share and the vision we hold for our country. But I feel, I feel pride and gratitude for this wonderful campaign that we built together, this vast, diverse, creative, unruly, energized campaign. She also called on supporters to keep an open mind, adding that Trump must be given a chance to lead. We owe him an open mind and the chance to lead. Our constitutional democracy enshrines the peaceful transfer of power. And we don't just respect that, we cherish it. The incumbent president, Barack Obama, congratulated his successor in a phone call in the early hours of the morning. Speaking at the White House after the phone call, Obama stressed the importance of a smooth transition of power. So I have instructed my team to follow the example that President Bush's team set eight years ago and work as hard as we can to make sure that this is a sex successful transition for the president-elect. Because we are now all rooting for his success in uniting and leading the country. The peaceful transition of power is one of the hallmarks of our democracy. President-elect Trump will hold his first transition meeting with Obama on Thursday at the White House before being inaugurated as the 45th U.S. president on January 20th next year. Nuaram Arirang News. Now, Korea's finance minister says the Trump administration could give a new chance to the Korean economy. Speaking at a ministerial meeting on Thursday morning, Yu Il Ho said although the change in U.S. economic policies will definitely intensify uncertainties in the financial market and the real economy, Trump's campaign pledges like boosting the manufacturing sector could in turn benefit Korea. He said that, if needed, financial authorities in Korea will immediately take measures to stabilize the market. Minister Yu added that the government will continue to cooperate with Washington in maintaining relations that benefit 
both sides. On this Thursday, Korean stocks have rebounded following Wall Street's lead. The benchmark KOSPI spiked more than 28 points, or some 1.5% to 1987 in the first 15 minutes of trading. The tech-heavy KOSDAQ is also trading sharply higher. Now, Korea's central bank is widely expected to keep its key rate steady at its monthly monetary policy meeting on Friday. In a recent survey of 100 local market experts, 99% believe the Bank of Korea will freeze its rate at the current 1.25%. This, as the BOK will want to gauge what impact Donald Trump's victory in the U.S. election will have on the global economy, as well as to see what move the Federal Reserve will make at its December rate-setting meeting. The Fed had signaled that a rate hike uh, could be in the works in December, and while most analysts agree the Fed will maintain its stance, it could put its plans on ice until next year should Trump's victory trigger market volatility and uncertainty. And that is all the news we have for now. Our next bulletin is coming up at noon career time. So until then, goodbye.